Uh, my name is Michael Lombardi. I'm the diving safety officer at the American Museum of Natural History. The suit is made of a, a hard aluminum. It's ca a cast aluminum alloy. So you're essentially inside of a, a pressure vessel. You're inside of a submarine. And that space is not compressible. So that, that's really the, the, the key with re removing pressure. Um, if you were in a, a compressible space, so for instance, if you're just in a wetsuit, the human body is exposed to pressure. It's caused for a whole host of physiology problems. So when we eliminate this problem with human physiology, we open up a whole new dimension for exploration. All the life support is self-contained on the suit itself. You're essentially using an oxygen rebreather inside the cabin. So you're recycling the, the cabin gas supply. Carbon dioxide is, re is removed chemically and oxygen is replenished to match your metabolic rate while at work or at rest. If we were to wet dive to these same depths, it would require a very complex use of mixed gas, so typically oxygen, nitrogen, and helium to allow us to dive very deep. I've had a, a lot of experience doing that, and you, you end up up against a wall very quickly in terms of, of how much time you have at depth to do these things. So in the exosuit, you're at surface pressure, you're recycling the cabin gas supply, and you're, you're breathing the same atmosphere that you are here, and you have you know, a 50-hour supply of it. So here we have a tool that can, that can cross bridge any number of industries um, and solve problems that we've never been able to solve before. One, two, three. That's me and the flippers. Michael Moyer, editor for Space and Physics in Scientific American. To understand why I'm diving over the side of the boat in search of my next meal, I've got to step back in time a bit.